afternoon. You're watching ABTV and today I am at the Arabian Travel Market, an event where deals worth more than $2.5 billion are generated. This annual B2B event showcases 2,800 products and services to dealers and buyers, which is numbered at 28,000. For the next hour or so, I will be speaking to industry experts about the different trends, different market shift and the different announcements that were made here at the Arabian Travel Market. And also, if you do have any questions or comments, then you know you can comment below and I will try and take them here. Our first guest for the day is Sanjeev Khosla from Expo 2020. Thank you so much for joining us here, Sanjeev. Thank you for having me here. Great. So, Sanjeev, firstly, what were the major announcements uh, that came out of ATM, especially the second day now? So, uh, for us, the first uh, uh, major announcement has been on ticket prices. We've announced our uh, ticket prices for two of our um, main ticket categories, uh, where the first one being the single day general admission ticket, which is at 120 dirhams. Uh, and then we also announced the ticket pricing for our uh, three day ticket, uh, which is at 260 dirhams. In addition, we've also announced uh, some very attractive uh, offers for uh, different segments uh, of our visitors. So for example, we've announced that uh, toddlers or kids below the age of five are free, uh, seniors are free. Uh, uh, if you are a student and you have a student uh, ID card, you get 50% off. If you're a youth between the age of uh, five and 17, you get 50% off. So a lot of attractive uh, offers that we've announced. All right, so Arabian Travel Market, essentially it's, it's, it's a platform where people can come together and talk about the trade deals, the travel deals, etc. So what would you say were the major announcements that came about, a major project updates that came about just ahead of the ATM? Sure. So we had, uh, we've been uh, obviously going full stream in the development of uh, our site. We are about 70% complete in our construction. Uh, by uh, October 2019, we will finish all the hard construction on the site. So till date, we've put in about 95 million uh, man hours of work into building the site. Uh, we have currently probably close to about 35,000 people at any point of time working on the site. So it's a, it's a huge team. Uh, and yeah, we are fully on track and we are ready to open gates on October 20, 2020. Now, a couple of additional announcements that we had in the last few weeks is we announced our signature uh, sustainability experience, which is called Terra, which is a completely immersive experience where you can go and find out uh, what is uh, the impact that we are having on the environment and how is it that we can actually make a difference. So it's, a, it's quite an incredible uh, experience and we've, uh, we announced that a, a few days back. Uh, the other a major announcement that we had was uh, we released an economic impact study on what is going to be the economic impact of Expo 2020. Uh, and that's, uh, that had some very key highlights. As an example, uh, we will uh, add about 122 billion dirhams oh, wow. to the GDP of the UAE over a period. This is over a period starting from when we won the bid, which was 2013, uh -huh. till, and we usually measure it for about a 10 year period after the event. So till 2031, we'll add 122 billion dirhams okay. to our GDP. Uh, during the uh, expo period itself, we anticipate a GDP uplift of about one and a half percent. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. So there are uh, a bunch of things that you said, some very, very impressive figures that you gave. But sustainability is a word that you've used so many times during the last five minutes, which Expo has been using over and over again. But one thing that I want to know is what exactly is going to happen after Expo 2020? Is it still going to be sustainable, sustainable say, five years later? You know, this is a question we get asked so often. It's actually very, very, very nice and heartening to hear that everybody wants to know what's going to happen with the site. And that means everybody is also focused on sustainability. So we, of course, do have a plan for the site. So right from the start, we had conceived that Expo 2020, once the event is over, will transform itself into a mixed-use business come residential district. So on 10th April 2021, when the event is uh, finished, we will close doors, and then we will have a six-month period where we'll give the entire site a makeover. And then it will get relaunched as District 2020, which will be a new freeze 
zone based in Dubai, catering to some very key sectors. It'll be both a mixed-use office and a residential district. Some of the key pavilions will become uh, attractions. So, for example, Terra, which was the sustainability pavilion that I mentioned, right. will become a children's science center in the legacy phase. So these are all plans which are currently already in place, and we have a full team that's working on it. Okay, that's brilliant. Uh, another thing that you just mentioned was immersive technology. And again, it comes with customer experience, of course, which, what, which is what Dubai is aiming at right now. So can you give us more details on that? Yes. So we're working, obviously, there are a number of new technologies which are out there, whether it's uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, you know, there, there are lots of uh, different technologies which are currently in the market, some of them which are very developed and some of them which are still emerging. Yeah. Uh, we don't believe that we should use technology or demonstra uh, demonstrate technology just for the sake of technology. Yeah. So what you will see in Expo is that this, this technology is used in a very immersive way through the experiences as you go through the pavilions where you're able to understand using this technology and really it's able to kind of uh, awaken inside you a sense of purpose or a sense of wanting to know more or a curiosity. So, uh, you know, we will be announcing more details in the future. I don't want to reveal too much right now, but trust me, it's, it's going to be something pretty amazing. All right. So uh, just another thing I want to touch upon again because we are essentially at a travel expo right now. So there have been a lot coming about in terms of uh, visa exemptions, ease of travel, coming to expo, etc. So can you give us more updates on the visa exemption element of it? Sure. So uh, this is an area that we work very closely with the government authorities, uh, obviously because this tends to be a federal and state matter. So uh, we have, if you're, uh, if you're aware, the government has already announced that there will be a transit visa which will be available. Of course, it's it's being launched before the expo starts, but it's been launched keeping in mind that during the expo period, we want a lot of transit visitors to exit the airport, come see the expo, and then go back and catch a flight. Uh, in addition, very recently, uh, uh, I think a couple of days back, Dubai Tourism also announced that, we, that they're looking at additional exemptions for India, India being the number one key market for visitors to the UAE. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, again, we're working very closely with them, and I think each one of these will get announced by the government as, as we go on. Uh, but uh, yes, it's uh, definitely top of our mind for uh, for getting the visitation numbers that we're looking at. Great, great. Sanjeev, uh, Expo 2020 is clearly very, very exciting for all of us and it's something that we're, we've been extremely proud of since we got the contract in 2013. But thank you so much for all of these updates and we are looking forward to more of these updates. Thanks for joining us today. So we are at the Arabian travel market right now and we are in conversation with leaders of various, various industries here at the ATM 2019. Today is the second day and with us our next guest is from Damak Properties, we have Fair Jean. Thank you so much uh, Jean for joining us today. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So firstly tell us more about what you do. Well, I'm uh, working for the Damak, I'm uh, heading the hospitality division and uh, we have a lot uh, to say about here today. First of all, we have uh, launched a partnership with uh, Rotana yesterday uh, for our 454 units in Riyadh, opposite uh, uh, Kingdom Tower, beautiful t twin tower, and uh, we're looking forward to welcome guests in the very near future. All right, brilliant. So uh, you work for the uh, hospitality division of Damak, essentially. So how exactly is that uh, different or uh, or a separate arm compared to Damak Properties, the real estate arm? Okay, so what we do is that we operate uh, the uh, Damak Properties into what we call a rental pool. That means owners who have bought units with Damak are giving us uh, their units in order for us to rent it and obviously give them return. And uh, we had a, a great achievement last year. Uh, we were 15% up uh, in terms of uh, return to owner and uh, it was a very uh, a very good result. Uh, the good news is also we have a lot of development in the coming months. Uh, most recently we have opened the uh, Damak uh, Towers by Paramount uh, down in Business Bay. So that's a 2,000 unit uh, alone. So that's the big four towers yeah, that you can see everywhere from uh, uh, from Dubai. And then soon we will also be opening the Privé uh, towards the end of the year, which is another 1,000 unit uh, into Damak. So all in all, uh, by the end of the year, we'll probably have something like 4,500 units uh, under hospitality management. Okay, brilliant. Uh, great. So it's not just in Dubai that you have been expanding. You're also venturing into the Saudi market, if 
I'm not wrong? C correct. Uh, as I just said, we, we launched uh, the Rotana uh, Hotel uh, with uh, the Damak Towers. That's 444 units in Riyadh. But we are also in Jeddah. We're also developing in Oman, uh, in, uh, in uh, and, uh, various other countries. Uh, so uh, very, very, very active. To be, uh, we have today in total a uh, number of units residential. We have 25,000 units open okay. and we have 40,000 under development. Right. So a great, great pipeline. And in terms of hospitality, which is my sector, we have about 10,000 key under development. All right, that's actually great to hear. But now, since there are so many of these projects that you're announcing, but again, the Mac is not the only one announcing so many new projects, especially in the hospitality sector. We've seen so many of these announcements coming up with regards to new hotels opening, etc. So what would you have to say about the acquisition, essentially, of the oversupply that is there in the oversaturated market? No, to be fair, there is a, a, a clear decline over the past uh, few months. Uh, everybody is feeling it, even though we are in the, in the more the, the rental pool element, where that represents only 20% of the market. And I think we still there is still room to grow in that particular sector. Dubai still enjoy 76, 78% occupancy. Uh, so it's still solid. Yeah. We just have to make sure that we hold our breath and we keep our rate up. All so. Right. Great, great, great. So uh, right now, just on those lines, I would like to ask you about the F&B outlets that we have in uh, in Dubai. So for hospitality as a sector as a whole, would you say that F&B is a driver or not? Absolutely, it's a key driver. You just need to have the right operation, the right concept, yeah. and you will see that in Dubai, actually, the good F&B restaurant okay. keep on going and are doing extremely well. All so right. yes, F&B is very important. All right, great. So finally what are you expecting to get out of the Arabian travel market? Obviously presence, uh, Damak is a key uh, participant, has been there for many years mm -hmm. and uh, it is uh, great for all our partners to see that Damak is still pursuing. We have 100 million square feet uh, uh, available and 52 million under development. So I think the future is bright. With the arrival of Expo 2020, 192 countries come Coming to Dubai, yes, we are going to see a cycle, but it's for the best and for the best future. All right, great. Thank you so much, John, for joining us and for those valuable insights. We definitely have learned a lot. Yes, as you know, we are still in conversation with the various guests who are here at the Arabian Travel Market. We're trying to cover as many industries as we can. We've just done hospitality. Our first interview was for Expo 2020, and now on the sets we have Haitham Matar, who is the CEO of Rasul Kema Tourism. Development Authority. Thank you so much for joining us, Item. Hello, how are you? Very good. Very good. Very good. I'm, I'm great. Great. So, Item, uh, how how does it feel to be here at the Ribbon Travel Market, and what are the major revelations that have essentially come out? It feels great. This is our eighth year in uh, participation. Uh, in the past four years, we've seen uh, a tremendous amount of growth in the number of participants here on the stand, from uh, tour operators and travel agents as well as hoteliers, and now we see more and more footfall. Uh, of uh, uh, exhibitors who are coming here to the uh, destination, the UAE at least uh, area where you see a lot of traffic, people very interested uh, in the UAE and really interested in Ras Al Khaimah and the summer offers that we have out there today. Right, so Ras Al Khaimah is essentially promoting tourism a lot, especially we've seen that over the last two years. So now what would you say is the different types of tourism that Ras Al Khaimah is essentially trying to promote? Ras Al Khaimah is focusing on adventure tourism, uh, which is a key pillar of our strategy that we launched back in 2016 and rejuvenated again in, uh, um, uh, uh, in 2019. The uh, uh, strategy that has uh, four key pillars with adventure tourism being one of the main components focuses on uh, delivering uh, new adventure activities such as the longest zip line in the world but we also have uh, new hiking trails and biking trails as well as our announcement today yesterday we signed with Bear Grylls uh, Survival Academy which is uh, a, a great brand and Bear Grylls is a very well-known uh, uh, Survival Academy show as well, uh, which will uh, uh, be open in the third quarter of this year in Ras Al Khaimah's Jebel 
Jace. Uh, this will be for children, uh, schools, uh, for universities, as well as uh, corporate companies, companies as well as and government. Right. So I'm aware that there was a three-year tourism strategy that was announced by Rasul Khema earlier. So firstly, can you tell us uh, more about the strategy? And secondly, how far have we gotten with regards to the strategy? So the strategy was was uh, launched or relaunched, as I mentioned, in 2019 in January, which goes to 2021, right. with specific targets to grow the number of tourists. We aim to reach 1.5 million tourists by 2021. Okay. We also have in the pipeline 6,500 rooms, which will open between now and 20 at the end of 2021. Uh, a new uh, tourism product. I mentioned the Bear Grylls, but we also have a fantastic product that will open at the end of 2020, which is the first of its kind luxury camp. This is 47 villas with private pools and, and uh, uh, events and activities that are all outdoor. So you'll have a challenging uh, adventure park as well on site. You'll have a, a, a on site farm, outdoor spa, outdoor gym, and a, and, and a lot more to bring to the destination. All right, great. So, how much do you think Russell Khema's uh, tourism could contribute to the economy in all? So, Russell Khema's tourism is now contributing 5% of the overall GDP. Okay. Our target is to reach 10% by the end of uh, 2025. We're well on target. We saw a 20% growth in revenues, total revenues, uh, in 2018 versus 17. We saw a 10% growth in uh, uh, the number of arrivals or the visitors. Uh, where we are uh, still behind is the supply. We need more rooms. It's a good problem to have sometimes, yeah. right? So we need more rooms because the growth of supply is at a pace of 3%. So you have 10% demand, 3% supply. And uh, uh, after the Arabian Hotel Investors Conference that was for the second year in a row in Ras al-Khaimah, where we had uh, over a th you know 900 people attend, uh, we've seen uh, a great interest uh, in uh, the uh, hotel development and Ras al Khaimah. Uh, AMR signed the, an address hotel uh, last year with us and two Rove hotels. Right. Uh, but also, we have a number of hotel brands that are coming up from Moving Pick to uh, Intercontinental, Anantara, Marriott, uh, Millennium, uh, Conrad, as well as the uh, first Hampton uh, uh, Suites uh, Resort. All right, so do you also see a lot of foreign investment happening in the tourism sp uh, sector, especially? And can you also give me a few figures to back that? So, uh, the foreign investment is uh, uh, almost balanced with the uh, uh, local investment, so it's about 50-50 right now. Uh, some of the foreign investments is coming in from uh, Eastern European countries like Czech Republic, who invested, uh, a company from Czech Republic invested in buying land and building a hotel. Uh, uh, we also have uh, a, a British and Irish who also bought land and will be building uh, hotels uh, on the island. Right. But we also have, uh, as I mentioned, local investors from the UAE and Russell Khaimah as well. Okay, great, great, great. So finally, I would like to ask you, what are the other announcements that you will be making in the course of the next two days? And what are the different collaborations that will be happening? So one of the key announcements is our summer campaign, which uh, offers uh, uh, unique uh, uh, value-add propositions for consumers, especially throughout the summer, and focusing more on the domestic uh, travel. So staycations, uh, people who uh, want to go on our rasulkhema.ae backslash staycations will find a number of uh, offers from the hotels as well as the attractions in Ras al-Khaimah and a number of things to do despite the summer heat. As you know, Ras al-Khaimah is still cooler. Uh, Jabal Jais, the highest mountain in the UAE, is about 10 degrees cooler than the, than the coast. And uh, we have a number of uh, challenging activities and interesting uh, adventure activities to do on the mountain. All right, great. And at this juncture, what are the key challenges that Russell Kema is actually facing? We need more rooms. <laughs> <laughs> so, you are, so we're talking about oversupply with the rest of our guests today, but over here it's over demand. It's over demand and supply, and we obviously, you know, we have supply coming in the pipeline. It's just uh, going to take a little bit longer than we, than we would like, to be honest with you. All right, great. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Haitham. We're very excited about what's going to happen in Russell Cayman over the next couple of years. Thank you, and we are too equally excited. Great, thank you. And we are still, as you know, at the Arabian travel market, and a lot of announcements coming this way, a lot of revelations happening, and there are a lot of market trends and shifts that are being discussed. With us now, we have our next guest who is in the studios with us, if I may ask to join you. Great. Hi, Vinayak. How are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here today. My pleasure. Right, so Vinayak, tell us more about BNB Middle East. 
It's it's a new concept. It's not like any of the other guests we have had. Not a topic that we've discussed at length. So tell us more about it. Well, I don't think you're going to get another guest like this either. <laughs> um, so we're a vacation rental management company, and uh, effectively what we do is uh, we take hot uh, homes, apartments, and we make them into ho ho uh, hotels. Okay hotel rooms so we give the hotel experience we give a better than a hotel experience uh, but staying as if you're staying in your own property um, we like to compare our properties to presidential suites and suites of five-star luxury hotels in the Middle East so we have three bedroom four bedrooms penthouses mansions villas and uh, it comes fully serviced so we offer a butler we offer cooks we offer airport pickup drop-offs we offer nanny services dream it and we'll offer it all right great so it looks like BNB is something that I'm going to use as an example for the shared economy model that we are moving towards. But how exactly is this different from the Airbnb model that already exists? Oh, it's completely different. Um, Airbnb is a platform. Okay. So it's um, it, what happened was Airbnb started off by a guy called Brian Chesky in San Francisco and he rented out his air mattress in his room to people coming to San Francisco to stay. Okay. Now, we use Airbnb as one of the online platforms to sell our apart properties. Okay. So people go on to Airbnb, they look at all these different properties, and then they come to Dubai, and they book it for one night, two nights, five nights. With Airbnb, you have Booking.com, Expedia, and the traditional online online travel agents. Okay. So what we do is we manage the properties. So you could compare us more to a, a hotel management company. So we take care of the property, we offer a service to the guests, and uh, an experience to the guests. All right, so basically, uh, whose properties are these that are being converted into hotels then? Individual investors, and... Uh, now we've started talking to a lot of developers. Um, as you know, in Dubai, a lot of these uh, developers have got stock lying, which aren't selling or renting out. So they fit it out for us. We take care of it. And, you know, we have no contractual obligation. So if they sell an apartment that is in our hands, that is being managed by us, not a problem. We move over and manage another one and they can sell it. Okay. So you did mention there's no contractual obligation. So that brings me to regulation then. So now we're talking about a market which is fairly new. Not a lot of people are aware of the intricacies of it, essentially. So, uh, is, is this essentially regulated? If it's not regulated, what is the safety then? Um, there's a famous word in German called Jein, which means yes and no. Um, there is regulation, but it's not it's not mature enough, it's not sophisticated enough, um, as, in, as in the West. Okay. And as a matter of fact, we've been consulted quite a bit, not only by, by, by government authorities, but also by developers on how they can increase the value of the properties in the communities while still allowing investors to invest in short-term rent. So, so to long story short, there is regulation. It's at a very premature stage, and we are helping and consulting developers and governments fine-tune it and improve it for themselves. All right, interesting. So how many of these units do you have right now? We have just under 50 properties in Dubai. Okay, and do you also plan on expanding uh, away from the region or in other countries in the region? We do. Um, uh, we're very picky and choosy on the properties we take. We don't take anything and everything. We have a specific portfolio. We're more in the larger and luxury segment of the industry. Um, we are looking at countries in the GCC. We have just started two villas in India. We're looking at Singapore. So we are looking to go international, yes. All right. So what exactly is your selling point then? So why would investors or, or property owners want to deal with you? The difference or our, our USB is we're holiday homes by hoteliers. Everyone that works for BNB Me is connected to the hospitality world in some way or the other. So we don't look in an apartment and see the square foot. As a matter of fact, I never ask the size of a property before we take it on board. Okay. We look at the property and see the experience that we can offer the guest who's going to come and stay there. So like I said, we take a home and make it into a hotel room with the convenience of being at home. Right. So what is the pricing structure then? Uh, we have properties that start from $100 a night okay. and our most expensive property at peak season probably goes for about just over $10,000 a night. Right. And, and is there a way that investors can invest into this model and make money out of it? Yeah, well, there's two ways. One is you can buy a property and give it to us to manage, or um, we are soon going to be looking to raise uh, Series A funding, and um, you can get in touch with me and we can send you our, our documentation and our ticket. All right, brilliant. Super interesting, and thank you so much, Vinayak, for sharing those insights with us. And uh, we are still at the Arabian travel market, which is happening at the Dubai World Trade Center right now. It is going to go on till Wednesday. It's a four-day event. Like I mentioned earlier, it is an event
event where more than 2.5 billion dollars worth of deals are generated it's an annual b2b event and there's just so much on offer and there's just so much excitement in the air right now so if you are in the travel industry if you are someone who is interested in the travel industry then this is where you need to be thank you for watching ab tv i will be back again tomorrow on ab live with a very interesting news topic that is being discussed